this video we'll be talking about HCI, the different factors that are required and the different types of users that could use a human computer interface. So we're going to start off with the important factors that are required to make a good HCI. First of all, navigation around the program should be clear, consistent and easy to follow. This speeds things up if there is a similar routine through the programs as users do not have to keep learning new things. There should be a layout that is appropriate to the task. There should be a standard feel to the software. For example, minimal text should be used for a child in order to minimise reading which helps to build user confidence. There needs to be consistency of signposting and pop-up information. For example, every next button should be in the same place using the same icon. There needs to be on-screen help. This prevents the user from having to look through a manual which makes it quicker for the user to get help. Finally, the HCI needs to be customizable to suit the needs of the user. This makes it more efficient if the user can change the items to suit their work preference. We're now going to discuss the different types of users that could use the HCI and the different requirements that they may require. If someone is disabled then they're going to have different requirements. Some of these include changing the background colour, the use of correct colour schemes to help people who have dyslexia, a puff suck switch, the use of specialist input devices such as those which use blowpipes to activate the computer can be used by anyone with limited physical mobility. Braille keyboards can be used to allow a visually impaired person to enter text into the computer. Visual messages can be used for those who are hard of hearing so that they know what they have entered is correct. Speech recognition rather than keyboards for users who cannot use a keyboard or a mouse. Now we move on to the types of HCI that would be needed if a child was to use the system. There should be a minimal amount of text on the screen as the child may not be able to read. Bright colours should be used to attract the child's attention. There should be an uncluttered appearance which makes it easier for the child to decide where they want to go. There should be a minimal use of the keyboard because it's easy to use a mouse. Speech synthesis should be used in order to give praise. Finally on this section, animation should be used in order to keep the child's interest. So continuing on from the different types of user, in this section we'll be talking about novice and expert users. For the novice user, the priority is the ease of learning and easy access to help. Unlike the expert user where their priority is getting the job done in the shortest time possible. In order to fulfil the novice user's priority, you can use clear navigation structure, wizards to help guide the user through the system, and a colour scheme which makes it easier for the user to use the system. For the expert users, the things that should be used are commands because they are quicker than using a GUI. There needs to be an increased number of ways of performing the same task. And finally, there needs to be shortcuts rather than having to go through a series of menus. Now we're going to talk about the different types of HCI that you may found. These things were more in the old paper, so like before 2010 but it's still a possibility that it could come up in the A2 paper, so make sure that you know them. One type of HCI is a touch sensitive screen. This could be used in a public information system such as in a museum, and this is useful as there is no need for a mouse or a keyboard which could get lost or broken easily. Another type of HCI is a biometric device. For example, a retina scan in order to gain access to a room. Some advantages of this are they're difficult to copy and you cannot lose your physical features. A voice interface could be used in a car navigation system. However, you have to train the computer which takes a long time and there may be delays in getting commands recognised. Finally, voice recognition can be used in this example, a slow typist dictating an essay directly into the computer. This is useful as it allows the handicapped to enter work into the computer and it allows people coordination to work faster. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you want to be notified about any new revision videos that I post then click subscribe and I will see you soon.